But what I want to know is, how do we demonstrate clearly to the public that an increase in sales tax is in their best interest without specific language in the measure to ensure that the public is actually getting what they believe they are voting for and need? And then what would that language look like? I think we need to clarify language that says exactly this increased revenue would protect city services that voters care about, like police and fire, and, and, and lack of that, I don't really understand now, the abandonment of the documentary transfer tax is no surprise. Um, Mr. Wesson even said that it was polling at ridiculously low numbers. So, you know, that, that, that one's not a surprise, and it would have chilling effect on the real estate market. But what I want to know is the effect, Mr. Um, Santana, if you can tell me, I'll give you four quick questions, and then, or actually three. The effect of instituting a salary freeze. What is the cost of employee raises for next year? And if balance that cost of a potential salary increase for next year, if this tax passed, then there would be no incentive for employees to freeze their salaries or give up raises. Is that not correct? The, uh, as you know, we have a, a number of labor contracts. Um, the coalition represents 70% of the civilian workforce. Uh, their, their contract expires at the end of the next year's uh, fiscal year. Um, the, uh, in order for us to uh, change the structure of the COLAs and the elements of that agreement, they have to agree to reopen up that contract. They've already done so twice, and this year we asked again, and and they refused to do that. Um, what the the fact of the matter is that uh, even if this measure passes, um, the city continues to confront an additional hundred million dollar shortfall the following year. And um, while it will certainly stabilize our outlook, uh, we will cause there will still be a gap. And the best way to address that gap is by a combination of uh, some reductions, and that there could be a handful left in non-essential services, uh, but continued discussion with labor uh, to mitigate the, that final shortfall that we're being confronted with. Kind of sense that uh, there's a need, but the, the growing issue appears to be their concern about whether we're going to change the way we do business or we're going to commit to certain things. And I would hope that as we go through the things that you're recommending on the, the issue of the convention center, that we not do what the state has done, ask for tons of money, and then five years later said, give me a ton more. And if we don't show people that this is going to be used appropriately and it's going to be balanced in the approach, it's my judgment we sh will never get to ask them again. And so whatever things that we put together to support it, I think it's got to be broadly done. And as we had one of these, and Jerry remember this, that we had one several years ago where we used an ad that basically showed people they're going to be pillaged and raped and things like that. That's not the way to go either. I mean, so we really need a balanced approach that gives those who are willing to vote an idea that they have some hope that they're going to get a sidewalk, a tree, an alley fixed, in addition to public safety, their libraries are going to be taken care of, their rec and parks, and those are things that are important to them. And in many communities, they're as equally important as having a police officer drive down the street to have these events and activities going on in the community. So whatever way we can frame that and be able to articulate how protective you're going to be with this 200 million a year so that it just doesn't go up in smoke. And as you know, with this budget, uh, 200 million can go up in smoke very quickly. And so the key is how do you guarantee people that it's going to be well managed and over the, the, the life of this additional revenue? And we're not going to be coming back in three or four years and say, oops, uh, that's now part of another structural deficit. So that's all I ask as you look forward. I just want to leave you uh, with this thought. My concern, again, is that the proposed language does not clarify exactly what this increased revenue will, would protect in city services. And I guess I'm reiterating what Mr. Parks just said. 
It doesn't emphasize the services that the voters care about, like fire and police. I think if we're going to do something like this, we have to mean what we say and say what we do. But in my opinion, at this point, this is a regressive tax, and it would cause other businesses to reconsider either coming here or possibly cause them to leave. This comes on the heels of a state tax increase. And while I understand others have different opinions, I still think, and I'm going to hold on to that, that we have to go show good faith to our residents, be truthful to our employees about where we stand, and I don't think this is going to be the answer.